Good morning, Accelerated Biology students. Mr. Adair here. And getting week three off to a good start. So today is Monday, September 21st. And there'll be a couple items for you to do today. If you remember last week, we talked about what we consider living versus non-living. And we started looking at scientific method and experimentation, as well as learning a little bit about COVID-19. So for today, this most of this week will be dedicated to learning about scientific thinking. And I'm going to try to do that in a way that you will stay interested in the material. But today, there's just going to be a quick slideshow. So follow along, maybe take some notes. If you need to pause this video right now to get out a notebook and a piece of paper, that's a good idea. And a pen, I should say. Um, as you'll need this information for the next test and for the, the activities this week. So today we are going to look at um, really the first step of the scientific method, which is observations and questioning. And we're going to focus on observation today. And really just what an observation is, is, you know, using your senses to, um, you know, make to gather information around you. And we'll talk about the two different types of observations next. Feel free to pause this video at any time to make sure you are following along. All right, um, really observations, what we're talking about is using our sens senses to gather data or facts. We have the ability um, to see, to hear, to touch, to taste, and we use our senses to figure out the world around us. All right, there are two main types of observations. This information you're learning about right now, you will take with you for AP Bio next, next year or the year after and in, into college and into your career because this will come up time and time again. So it's very important that you understand these two major types of observation. The first type of observation, and you can take notes on this, that's a good idea, is called qualitative observations. Qualitative means you're describing what you see or what you feel or what you touch. You're describing the color, the texture. It can be observed, but it can't really be totally measured. It would be kind of like your interpretation of what you see. Okay, and we'll look at some examples also. The next type of observation is quantitative, like a quantity. This is an observation that we actually measure and write down the data, it involves numbers. So a qualitative observation, let's say you're looking in your backyard and see you see a rabbit in your backyard and it jumps over the fence. A qualitative observation would be the brown colored rabbit jumped over the fence. A quantitative observation would be to go out and measure how high the rabbit jumped. You could say the brown rabbit jumped 11 inches, or I should say, let's say 10 centimeters over the fence. And then you actually have a number to do. So qualitative versus quantitative. It's very important that you know those two things. All right, let's look at a couple Examples. Well, now I already used the bunny reference and looks like we have a bunny here. Um, oh, I wanted, let's talk about inference before we look at that. I'm going to go forward and then back real quick. An inference is your judgment or opinion of an observation. An explanation for an observation you made. That is your inference. So let's look at this last, this photo here, and let's talk about our inferences versus our actual observations. So you can pause the video here, and maybe in your notebook, write down an inference. So for one example, an inference that I make when I look at this image is that we have a bunny rabbit sitting on a couch and there are cookies stacked on its head. Why would I say that cookies would be an inference and not an observation? Think about it. Do we know for a fact those are cookies? 
We don't know for a fact. They sure look like they could be cookies stacked on the rabbit's head. But we don't know for a fact. Maybe they're plastic toys or something. That's an inference. Um, do we know 100% that that's a bunny? It really does look like one, but could it maybe be a guinea pig? That could be an inference. That gets a little sketchy there. Um, uh, is the bunny or is the rabbit inferring that it is a rabbit? Is the fact that it's on a couch, is that an inference or an observation? You can answer this question on your own in your own head. The reality is it is an inference. We don't know if that's a couch. It could be part of the bunny cage or we don't know. We just don't have enough information. So let's think about observations though. A qualitative observation, qualitative meaning what we kind of um, without data gather would be that this animal is brown, gray, and white furred. Qualitative would be there are items stacked on this animal's head. We could say that. Now, quantitative gets a little bit more um, specific. We don't know if those are cookies or other items stacked on the head. To be honest, we would have to do more experimentations or at least see it in real life, right? And we, we'll talk about the experimental method later. But if we count how many items are on that rabbit's head, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A quantitative observation could be there are ten items on the rabbit's head. So it's hard to use these examples via distance learning. It's much easier in person in class. And um, but the main thing you need to know is the two types of observations qualitative versus quantitative and what an inference is all right now let's look at this this is kind of fun to look at you can pause the video and take a time take um, some time to look at this drawing now I want you to make two observations you could write those down in your notebook and I want you to make two inferences and you could write those down in your notebook and pause the video and do that right now. All right, so when we look at this picture, a couple of the observations we can make would be potentially that there are two types of footprints. Now, a footprint is an inference though. We really don't know from this what that is, but we're inferring that there are like footprints in this scene and there are two different types um, an observation could be the one um, one set of footprints although we are inferring that they're footprints I should say but I mean with this example you can it's not like the most perfect one in the world it's just to prove a point but one are colored like bluish green and the other are reddish pink that's a qualitative observation a quantitative, we could literally count every single one of those dots and make a number. I'm not going to do that right now, but that would be a, a quantity that we could look at. Now, if you look at these footprints, you could say, well, I infer that these are footprints of two different types of animals. They um, were walking in nature and then one animal attacked the other animal and killed it and walked away. Now that is an inference, right? We don't know if that happened for sure. That would be a very interesting inference. We could use other observations to help prove that inference. For example, if you look at the greenish blue footprints, they get more further apart as they approach the other animal. And we could actually measure that. So the measurement would be quantitative. The, um, the fact that they are running after the other animal would be an inference though. We don't know for sure. Maybe the one animal, if that's what it is, flew away and didn't get attacked. Or maybe they did a little dance together and one flew away. We do not know. But we can make a lot of observations and we can make inferences from this image. So today you learned about two types of observations, qualitative and quantitative. And you also learned about um, what an inference would be.
And we will talk more about the scientific process later this week and um, be in touch.